Welcome everybody to theCUBE's live coverage of AWS reInvent 2021. We're here in the main hall. Yes, this is a physical event. It's a hybrid event, probably the industry's most important hybrid event in the year. We're super excited to be here. Of course, last year during the lockdown, reInvent was purely virtual. This year they're going hybrid. 20 plus thousand people, I hear their whisper numbers like 25, 27,000. Hundreds of thousands of people online. The Cube's here, two sets. We got two remote studios, super excited. I'd like to introduce my co-host, David Nicholson. He'll be here all week with us. Uh, John Furrier is also here. Lisa Martin for the Cube's wall-to-wall -wall coverage. And we're so psyched to start off this session with Kenneth Chestnut, who's the head of technology partnerships at Stripe. Stripe's an amazing company. Ken, great to see you. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me, Dave and David. I greatly appreciate it. How about this, right? <laughs> Finally, live event. We've done a few. We've probably done four or five this year, but... It's good to be back in person. It is. Yeah, absolutely. So Stripe, I mean, wow, kind of powering the new economy. Tell us a little bit more for those people who may not be familiar with Stripe. They probably use it sure. without even knowing it when they're signing away. Yes. But tell us about the company. Well, uh, Stripe was founded in, in 2010 by two brothers, Patrick and John Collison. And really it was from their first business and realizing how hard it was to actually charge for things on, online. Um, you had to acquire a, a relationship with a, with a gateway provider to accept payments. You had to acquire a, a relationship with an with a acquiring bank. Um, and you had to do that for each and every country that you wanted to service. Uh, so the same way that AWS reduced the barrier in terms of not having to procure, spend millions of dollars on storage, computers, networking, uh, effectively, what we, we've done at Stripe is reduce the barriers around economic infrastructure accepting payments online. So you've reduced that undifferentiated heavy lifting for payments. Absolutely. But so describe, Ken, what it was like kind of pre-Stripe. You would literally have to, what, install servers, get storage, and, and put, put software on there, get a database, and then what? If you had any money left over, you could <laughs> actually do some business. But, but, but describe the sort of what the experience is like with Stripe. Sure, so uh, the, our, our, with, with Stripe, we literally talk about seven lines of code. So we, we allow any developer to um, uh, provide a set of APIs for any developer to accept payments on, online. And we do the undifferentiated heavy lifting in, in terms of accepting payments, accepting those payments, processing them, revenue reporting and reconciliation, um, all ensuring compliance and security. Um, so it's like you said, uh, taking care of the undifferentiated heavy lifting around accepting payments online. And the, enable, the enabler there is the cloud. I mean, it was 2009, 2010, you guys were founded. The cloud was only like three years old, right? And so you had to really sort of take a chance on leveraging the cloud. Or maybe early on you just installed it yourself and said, this isn't going to scale. So maybe tell us how you sort of leverage the cloud. Sure, um, so we're a long time uh, AWS uh, customer and, and user um, uh, back in the early days of, of Stripe and the early days of, of AWS and we've just uh, grown uh, with, with AWS and, and the ecosystem and it's interesting because a lot of, uh, a lot of the companies that have been built on, on AWS and grown to be successful, they're also Stripe customers as well. So uh, they use Stripe for their economic uh, infrastructure. We use Stripe, we're, we're, we run our company on AWS and we use Stripe, it, it's true, the integration took like minutes, it was so yeah. simple. Hey, you test it, make sure it, it scales. But so, what, what's the stack look like? What, is, there, is there such thing as a payment stack? What's the technology stack look like? Sure, so we, we initially started with payments and being able to accept payments uh, on, online. Uh, we, we brought in out our, our, our Stripe product portfolio now to effectively provide economic uh, infrastructure for, for the internet. So that could be accepting payments, uh, it could be setting up marketplaces, so companies like Lyft and Deliveroo uh, use Stripe to power their marketplaces with their, with their drivers and, and uh, uh, deliverers. Um, uh, we provide a, a product called Radar that, uh, that pre um, prevents uh, fraud uh, around around the, the the globe, um, based upon the data that we're we're seeing from our from our customers, um, we have uh, issuing and treasury, so that companies can provide their users or their merchants with banking services, so loans, uh, issuing credit cards. So we we've, we've really broadened out the, the the product portfolio of Stripe to provide sort of economic infrastructure for the internet. So we talked about 
Stripe being in the cloud from an infrastructure perspective yeah. and how that enables certain things. But that in and of itself doesn't change the dynamics around sovereignty and governance from country to country. Sure. Uh, I, I imagine that the global nature of AWS sort of dovetails with your strategy, but how, how do you address that? It's one thing to tell me in Northern California you can process payments for me, but now globally go across 150 countries, how do you make that work? Yeah, uh, absolutely. So we, we establish relationships uh, within, within each uh, country that we operate in. We're in about 47 uh, countries uh, today, um, and that's rapidly expanding, so that companies can, can process or accept payments and do uh, financial transactions within, within, within those countries. So we're in 47 countries today. We, we accept a, a multitude of different payment, uh, different currencies, different payment types. So the US is very uh, credit card focused, but if you go to other, other parts of the, the, the globe, it could be uh, debit cards, it could be um, uh, wallets, uh, uh, Google Pay, Alipay, uh, others. So really it's uh, providing sort of the payment methods that users prefer in, in the different countries uh, and, meeting, and meeting those users where, where they are. Are you out of the box compliant? What integration is required to do that? Uh, what about things like data sovereignty? Is that taken care of by the cloud provider? Are you guys, and where, 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 does, where does AWS end and you guys pick up? Yeah, so we're, we're PCI compliant. Um, we, we leverage uh, AWS as our, as our infrastructure um, to, to grow, grow and, and, and scale. So, um, one of the things that we're, we're proud of is uh, through, throughout 2020 and 2021, we've, we've had 11 nines of, uh, of, of uh, or five nines of uptime, um, even through um, uh, Black Friday and, and Cyber Monday. So providing, AWS provides that, that infrastructure which we build on top of to provide uh, you know, five nines of uptime for our, for our users. Can you describe in more detail, Ken, your, your ecosystem? I mean, you're responsible for tech partnerships. Sure. What is that ecosystem? How, how, paint a picture of it for us. Sure, so um, a, a number of users want to be able to use Stripe with, with their other uh, IT infrastructure and, and their business processes. So a, a customer may start uh, with a, a salesperson may start with a quote or order uh, in, in Salesforce, want to automate the invoicing and billing and payment of that with, with Stripe, and then, uh, reconcile re revenue in an ERP s solution like SAP or Oracle or, or NetSuite or Intuit um, in the case of, of small, medium businesses. So really um, what we're focused on is building out that, that ecosystem to allow uh, um, our, our customers to streamline their business processes um, and, and integrate Stripe into their existing IT infrastructure and, and, and business processes. I mean, you mentioned a lot of different services, but broadly speaking, if I think about payments, I, I, correct me if I'm wrong, but you were one of the early uh, sort of software companies, if I can call you that, um, <laughs> platforms, whatever, but to really focus on uh, usage-based pricing. But how do, I, how do I engage with you? What's, what's the pricing model? Maybe you could describe that a little bit. Sure, so the pricing model is very, very transparent. Uh, it's, on, it's on the website, so uh, we, we take a, um, a percentage of each transaction, so literally you can, you can set up a, a, a Stripe uh, account, it's self-service. Um, uh, we, we take 2.9% uh, plus 30 cents on every uh, tra transaction. Um, we don't, you don't start getting um, uh, charged until uh, you start accepting payments from your, from your customers or from your users. Easy on. Um, can you give us a sense of the, the, the business scope, maybe any metrics you can share? customers, whatever you're comfortable sharing. Sure, so there's a couple things we can share uh, publicly just in terms of the size of the, the business. I think since, uh, since 2020, uh, more than two million businesses have launched on, on Stripe. Uh, so uh, two million in, 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 in 2020. Um, we've, uh, uh, in the past 12 months, we've uh, 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 processed over 173 billion uh, API calls. Uh, we do. We process about um, uh, hundreds of billions of of of, of, of payment volume uh, every every year. Um, if you look at sort of the macros of the business, the business is growing uh, faster than the broader e-commerce space. So, the amount of payment volume that we did in this past year is more than the entire industry did when Patrick and John founded the company in in 2010. Just to give you a 
uh, a, an idea of the, 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 the size of the business and sort of the pace of the business. So you're growing as e-commerce grows, but you're also stealing share from other sort of traditional payment systems. Okay, so that's a nice flywheel effect. And of course, Stripe's a private company, they've raised you know, well over a billion dollars, and Peter Thiel you know, was the original founder, so, or funders, so you, you know that's, he's talking scale. I want to go back to something you said about radar. Sure. So there's tech in, in your stack, fraud detection, right? So Absolutely, and some AI of that, and machine learning right, as so, well. And you, so you guys, I mean, are you a technology company? Are you a, a, a FinTech company? What are you? We're, we're a software company. We yeah. provide software and we provide technology for developers. Uh, to make online businesses and make uh, uh, commerce uh, more seamless and more frictionless. A cloud first, API first, I mean, maybe describe how that is different maybe than you know, the technical debt that's been built up over you know, decades with traditional payment systems. Yes, it's, it's very similar to the early, or earlier days of AWS where a lot of tech forward companies leverage Stripe um, to um, whether it be large enterprises to transform their, their businesses and, and move online, or, or uh, uh, startups and developers that want to uh, start a new business online and, and do that uh, as quickly and seamlessly as possible. So it's, it's quite the gamut from large enterprises that are digitally transforming themselves, companies like Marsk and, and uh, NASDAQ and, and others, uh, as well as uh, um, startups and developers that have, have, have you know, started their businesses and, and born, on, born on Stripe. So when you talk about a startup, how small of an entity makes sense? Uh, when you think of, you know, if you look at it from an economic perspective, lowering the friction associated with transactions can lift up a large part of the world with sort of, you know, with, with very, very small businesses. Is that something that this is all about, or? Yeah, absolutely. So like I said, you know, two, two million businesses have, have launched on, on, on Stripe. Uh, in, in the past year, and, and those vis businesses vary, but it could be literally a, a, a developer or a, 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 a small uh, SMB that wants to be able to accept uh, payments on, online and uh, can just set up a, a, a Stripe a account and, and start accepting payments. Yeah, so this is not a one-hit wonder. Um, lay out the vision for Stripe, right? I mean, you're, you're a platform. Uh, you're, you're becoming a fundamental ingredient of the digital economy. Sounds, pre-pandemic that was all a bunch of buzzwords, but today we all know how important that is. But what, lay out the vision for us, Ken. Yeah, really, our, our, the mission of Stripe is to grow the GDP of the internet. Um, and, and so what that means is uh, more and more, our, our, our basic belief is more, more and more businesses uh, will, will uh, go, go online uh, with, the, with the pandemic that, that was uh, accelerated but I think the, the general trend of businesses moving online uh, will continue to accelerate and we want to provide uh, economic infrastructure to support those businesses. Um, you know, um, uh, uh, Andreessen talked about sort of software, software e eating the world. Well, fin, fin, our belief is FinTech is eating software. So in, in the fullness of time, I think the opportunity is for uh, any, any company to be a financial services company and we want to em empower any company that wants to, or any user that wants to be a financial services company to, to provide the economic infrastructure for them to do so. And, and you know, I mean, you're a data company in that sense. You're moving bits around, you know, just data is, da I like to say data is eating software, you know, because <laughs> really, you got to have your data act together. Absolutely. Um, and, and that's an evolving, I mean, you guys started 2010, I would imagine your data strategy has evolved quite dramatically. Yeah, it's a great, it's a great call out, Dave. Uh, one of our other products is a product called Sigma. So uh, Sigma allows uh, merchants or our customers to query payment and transaction data. So they want to be able to understand who, who, who are their customers, what, what are the payment methods that those customers prefer in different countries and different regions. Um, so we're, we're starting to have some interesting use cases um, working with, with AWS and, and other partners when you can start combining payment and transaction data in Stripe with other data to understand customer segmentation, customer 360, lifetime value of a customer, customer acquisition costs, being able to close the books faster in your ERP because you can apply that payment and transaction data to your general ledger to, to close the books faster at the end of the month or uh, at the end of the quarter, or at the end of the year. So uh, yeah, we're, we're, um, uh, as, as more and more companies are, are using Stripe, 
um, they want to be able to take advantage of that data and combine it with other, other sources of, of data to drive business value. Yeah, you mentioned some of those key metrics that are, that are so important to companies today. I'll give you the last word, reInvent. Oh, the hall is packed. A um, little bit surprising, frankly, you know, but, uh, but exciting. Uh, what are you looking forward to this week? Yeah, I'm just looking forward to meeting people in person again. It's, uh, it's great to be here and, and you know, uh, uh, we have a, a, a strong relationship with AWS. We have lots of, of partners in, in, in common here uh, as well, both consulting partners and technology partners. So really looking forward to meeting with partners and, and, and customers and especially as we, as we plan for next year and uh, launching our, our, our partner uh, program beginning of next year, uh, there's a lot of, uh, uh, groundwork and, and things to learn from from here as we as we we we, we launch our, our our partner business formally next year. I'll bet. Looking forward to that, Ken. Thanks so much for coming on the cube. Thank you so much. Thanks. Appreciate Great to it. Have Appreciate you. the time. All right, and then we want to thank our sponsors, uh, AWS, of course, and also AMD, who's making the editorial segments that we bring you this week possible. For Dave Nicholson, I'm Dave Vellante. You're watching the Cube at AWS Reinvent 2021. Keep it right there. We're right back.